video, we're going to talk about the superiority complex of black Americans, which is not really a superiority complex. It's really an inferiority, infer, infer, oh my goodness, inferiority complex that they have about light-skinned people, or what you call mulatto people. And they will overcompensate f by it by throwing direct jabs at mulattoes. And uh, this was uh, unprovoked. Um, it was, it, did nobody tell them to say this? Um, but uh, we're going to get into this video and see what she said about mulattoes. Let's go. So this tweet says, Alan Iverson's mom's braiding his hair, me again, will always be an amazing moment. And so Which is some ghetto, unprofessional nigger shit. That's what that is. Let's keep going. Someone quoted this and said, we'll never see this again because all these guys got white mamas. <laughs> the NBA is full of mulattoes. Which, I mean, I don't see how that's an insult. But, I mean, why the fuck would you want somebody braiding your hair at the game anyway? We're there to play basketball. You do that shit at home. Autos. We'll never see nothing like that again. And quite frankly, I think that's the reason why viewership is so low because they're allowing all of these mulattoes with connections instead of pure talent. <sighs> and uh, let's do what this fat black bitch just said. She just said it here and said that they're allowing mulattoes with connections uh, instead of pure talent. That's the fake narrative that they have been concocting about mulattoes and light skinned people. For a very long time. When they do something, it's pure talent. When we do something, it's because of our skin tone is, or, and it's because we're privileged. And that's what they fear. They know that mulattoes, we're superior to them at everything. From physical beauty to creativity and to talent. All right. And uh, they have to concoct this narrative talking about how they're privileged. And what I will say is that the AAU high school NBA game has become more of a um, a money thing for sure. But to sit up here and say that these kids don't have talent or they're not competing against other talent who are full-blooded, quote-unquote, black, is a complete bold-faced lie. Um, matter of fact, let me go ahead and continue this video before I give my the rest of my opinion. And that's why I don't nobody want to watch that. I really wish Ice Cube would come out. And that's not true. The reason why the NBA ratings is down is because of viewer. The reason why the viewership is down is because of stream streaming. And also is down because of um, the, the the prices of the game is too high. That's why it's down. And sometimes we can shoot, we can play too. We can. Sh Steph Curry has changed the game so much that a lot of people, a lot of teams, they like to shoot threes because that's how impactful Steph Curry is. And sometimes you have some teams who shoot too many threes, and it can mess up sometimes the floor of the game, and it can get a little too sloppy. But it's really because the viewer is really because the streaming, the streaming, and also the price of the games. Even on NBA TV, this lady has never watched. I guarantee for a fact, she does not watch NBA basketball. All right. But see how she had throw that slick jack at mulattoes and try to talk about how they're not talented. These mulattoes are destroying black men, dark skinned black men specifically. That's what I'm talking about. All right. They know that we're more talented than, than them. All right. For example, all right. LaMelo Ball is destroying. The NBA right now. And he's a mixed race guy. He has a mulatto father, meaning a light-skinned FBA father and a white mother. And he's destroying them. He's breaking records. Uh, Jared McCain is breaking records. They see all these mulattoes breaking all these black guys' records. And they're doing it with ease. All right. While they're being guarded and competing against dark-skinned black men. <laughs> they're trying to make it seem like they're going against less competition. That's not true. All right, they're still the majority of the NBA, all right? But yes, they're trying to make it seem like we're not as talented, which is a damn lie. And a lot of these um, dark-skinned men that you see on these teams, even the ones who are the same age as these mulatto guys, notice that these guys are usually sidekicks to mulatto men on these on these NBA teams. All right, for example, they got a new guy on the Charlotte Hornets by the name of Brandon Miller, who's a great, who's a good player. He's going to be a good, great player in the league, and he's a dark-skinned black guy. But he's a sidekick to LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball is the alpha male of the team. We can go, um, I'm not saying that dark skin men are not talented. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that we're the ones who can outperform them with ease. All right. We can do everything they do times 50, even better than, we do it better than they do. So they feel threatened by us, not only how we look, but also the talent that we have. And we're more talented than them. All right. You're never going to see a white guy or, or an Asian guy for the most part. They're not threatened by them. Because they kind of know their place and they not, 
they're not as talented <laughs> as us. So they're threatened by the light skinned guy. And also with these other teams, look at Trey Young, the other, the mother dark skinned dudes or peons on the team. You see, you know, it's a Patterson here. Even with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you can make a strong case that Anthony Davis is the best player on the Lakers, and to me, he is. But he's made of glass. He gets injured a lot. All right. Look at Steph Curry, what he did in the Olympics. Steph Curry was getting double teamed the whole time throughout the Olympics. That's why he started off slow like that. He just started off slow. It's just that he was getting double teamed, and they had noticed that they weren't double teaming LeBron because the other teams in the Olympics weren't double teaming LeBron because he wasn't a threat to them. And what happened in the Olympics? The mulatto boy outshined the black boys. Uh, he had him in the corner being his sidekick. We naturally outshined them. We can go to, to the Boston Celtics with Jason Tatum. <laughs> Jason Tatum is the alpha male of the team. And Jay LeBron is the sidekick. So we see this phenomenon over and over again. Even with what's going on with in music. They let a light-skinned dude in, in Drake. Especially a mixed race guy. What happened? We naturally outshined them. And now Drake is going to court trying to sue him. So I'm going to make a separate video about. And he's on the verge of owning the entire industry. All right. So they, that's why they threatened by us because we're naturally more talented than them. And on top of the way we look. And they hate giving light skinned people, especially the men, attention. They want you to be an outcast, which is not necessarily a bad thing all the time. They want you to be an outcast in the society because they fear you. All right. They hate when we get attention. They hate when we get. Uh, praise, and hey, when we, anything, when we take pride in ourselves, all right, let's keep going. With some sort of game, no celebrities, a, a, a cool five-on-five five game with people from the hood who never made it out the hood, because I know 35 and 40-year-olds right now that'll hoop around NBA players. I know people out of my hood right now, I can get five, I can get five people from the Mississippi Delta, Bolivar County, right now, and go against your best five players in the NBA, and they'll sweep their ass. So that's a goddamn lie. Do not, do not be listening to these delusional ass broads. They will not even come close to beating a, a top five in a damn NBA. They're fucking lying. All right, <laughs> they're lying. She can get the top five p old niggas in the country, or old top five high school basketball, whatever she want to get the top five black college players and put them up against the top rookie class of the NBA, they're not going to beat them. It's not going to be close. That's delusion. All right. They're not in the NBA for a reason. All right. But, um, and that's another thing. They want to make us feel like we're so inferior also due to our DNA, but it's actually the other way around. We're, we're more talented than them because our DNA is mixed and we're actually, um, just due to the ad mixture, uh, we're, we more, we're more multi-talented than they are. All right. That's why that's why they're so in fear of us. Look at Tiger Woods. Look at all these MLS men, these Moolah, and these mixed guys mixed with FBA. They destroy everything. We're the face of everything. Look at boxing. Notice the pattern here. Javante Davis, boxing, light-skinned guy. Like it, it just goes on and on of us outshining everyone. And that's what they hate. All right, and they tried to, I remember I was in uh, the comment section, and she, this lady was talking about DNA and stuff. I said, and she tried to make it seem like mulattoes and light-skinned black people were inferior. I said, due to their DNA, I said, you've never seen a dark-skinned black man or a woman get their DNA stolen or their cells stolen from them in order to cure diseases. Now, you can go up here and try to lie and talk about how, well, you know, our organs is worth more than and more than a billion dollars, all that little shit. And they make, that, they make up those narratives because they have low self-esteem. But you have never seen a dark-skinned black person, they take a dark-skinned black person's DNA and cure diseases with it. They do that with light-skinned people in America. I made a video about Henrietta Lacks. All right? The best FBA inventors are really are all mulattoes. You know, I'm not saying dark-skinned people are not creative. Absolutely not. But we are a minority in a minority as a group. Especially amongst black America, but we're, we're the best inventors throughout history when it comes to that group. What does that tell you? All right. So, um, no, we're not inferior to you guys. So, I'm out. Also, let's remember what happened a couple of years back. Um, I believe it was 2016. In 2016, in February, I believe. We witnessed the greatest dunk contest between two mulatto men 
that we've ever seen in an NBA. We've seen millions, I mean, not millions, but a shit ton of dark-skinned men competing against other dark-skinned men and other groups of men, like white men, in the dunk contest, right? And they they were okay. They were pretty good. You know, they was okay. But none of them, when they put two mulatto brothers in the dunk contest, it was easily the greatest dunk contest that we've ever seen. The dark-skinned dudes try to downplay it and try to act like it wasn't, but they know it was the greatest dunk contest ever. A lot of them could, came, you know, when I speak to them, they be like, that was the greatest dunk contest I've ever seen. They have to come clean about it. But notice it was two mulatto brothers who are jumping over mascots, jumping over over behind, uh, behind the free throw line easier than Michael Jordan, Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon, these two brothers right here. Zach Levine, I remember Charles White was cracking a joke talking about how you never seen a light-skinned dude jump high as Michael Jordan. It's funny because Zach Levine broke Michael Jordan's, you know, you know, jump uh, vertical record, I believe. You know, but look right here. When they let us in, we outperform everybody. Somebody please tell me that I'm lying. That's why they don't never want to give us attention. All right. I'll see you on the next one. I might even react to this video on this channel later on for the hell of it.